Thank you very much. Uh, I think it says something about uh, attitudes towards infrastructure that we're panel B at the end of the day, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get through that. Um, but obviously infrastructure is, uh, is, is, is very important, and I think it actually, a number of the talks today uh, will uh, feed into um, <clears throat> what I'm gonna talk about with the DOI, uh, DOI event tracker. Uh, well, when infrastructure is done well, it, uh, it uh, should be, really, it should be boring and people don't pay much attention to it. So uh, I'll try to keep this talk, uh, talk brief. But um, I think uh, a couple of the things resonated with what uh, Paul and Melinda were saying when they talked about, Paul was talking about getting the best possible uh, data when you're dealing with metrics and accuracy and scope and also transparency and openness in the data collection. So this is uh, what uh, the DOI event tracker uh, is, is trying to accomplish. And also, uh, Melinda mentioned the point about uh, article level metrics um, for, uh, for researchers being interested in that and being, and being evaluated on that. So the DOI event <coughs> tracker, just to give a little bit of uh, background, uh, has its roots in the um, ALM, article level metrics uh, software that uh, PLOS developed a number of years ago and have uh, implemented on there. Uh, system, and uh, this is, uh, they, it's based on this ALM uh, software is based, is open source software, and uh, Crossref started experimenting with it uh, back in the beginning of uh, 2014, uh, and other publishers started to look at this, and so uh, a, a small group of publishers came uh, to Crossref uh, in 2014, beginning of 2015, to see could this be more broadly applied, because if it's applied just for, for, for one publisher, that's interesting, but if this could be applied more, more widely, uh, that would be even more valuable uh, for, uh, for, for, for the industry. So Crossref uh, got a pilot going uh, for what then became the DOI event tracker, uh, and it uh, progressed uh, very successfully, and in July this year, the Crossref board approved moving forward with a production DET service, <clears throat> and that's what we're working on now at the moment, uh, looking to launch uh, in uh, the early part of uh, uh, 20, 2016. So uh, the DOI event tracker uh, is an open clearinghouse of data on publications activity online. Uh, so we're going to be tracking, uh, and the pilot tracks events such as uh, uh, shares, uh, mentions, discussions, recommendations, uh, usage, and uh, the uh, sort of stakeholders and interest group for this are, are very wide ranging. Of course, it's publishers, but it's also funders, institutions, researchers themselves, uh, technology uh, providers. And so uh, uh, the DET is collecting this data, but not providing uh, metrics, and uh, organizations can build the metrics, uh, build the metrics on, on top of what uh, DET is uh, collecting. So as part of, the, part of the pilot and looking forward to, to launch, we have an initial set of, uh, of sources. And uh, these include blogging platforms, uh, Wikipedia platforms like uh, Mendeley, uh, social uh, networking sites as well. And uh, as part of the pilot, we've tested out uh, a couple of different models. There's a, a push model and a pull model. So services can actually push information to DET. Uh, this has happened uh, with, with Wikipedia. Wikipedia is actually, um, I think now, something like the fifth largest referrer of, uh, of DOIs. So there are lots of DOIs that get into scholarly entries on, on Wikipedia. And uh, as a result of the DET pilot, Crossref actually has a, a service that shows in real time uh, sites and unsites, which is interesting, on, on Wikipedia. So this data is coming in and flowing in, that, and that, for example, will be part of part of uh, the DET service. But also there's the, uh, also the uh, uh, pull model that of course with the bigger services that you know, scholarly uh, communications for them is, is uh, a blip you know, for an organization like Facebook or, or, or Twitter, they have APIs available and so we're uh, looking at uh, taking advantage of those to, to pull that information uh, into the DET service as well. And we'll also be connecting with, with, with ORCID and, and, and DataSite and other uh, specific scholarly uh, services, uh, services as well. So this is still uh, very, very much under, under, uh, under development and it's going gonna, it's gonna to change as we, we move along uh, into, uh, into next year. <clears throat> 
So Crossref is also uh, very much about uh, uh, sustainability and having uh, something that's uh, infrastructure, but uh, it's, it's got to be sustainable, and that means uh, it, it has to, uh, anything we do has to cover its costs and have a surplus even to reinvest into developing the, the, the service further. So the plan for DET is to have um, open uh, data uh, available, uh, an open API, uh, but then for organizations that want guaranteed uptime, guaranteed response time, organizations that will be uh, uh, building, uh, using the API for uh, production services, uh, they will have uh, a paid-for service available that will guarantee, uh, guarantee uptime, uh, maybe some different uh, data access options, um, uh, things like that. Uh, we're, uh, again, exploring those uh, at the moment as we uh, develop, uh, develop the service. Uh, one uh, possible twist to this would be if, um, uh, in terms of the open data and, and the costs associated with this, uh, for particular sources, uh, for instance, Twitter, there may be actually costs involved in accessing the Twitter data, and it's not always clear with data sources uh, if the information can be uh, reused, uh, reused op openly as well. So there's uh, uh, a lot to w a lot to work through uh, in this uh, in this area. Uh, but <clears throat> we see DET as uh, extending out the uh, current existing Crossref uh, infrastructure. So. Uh, Metadata enables connections. Crossref uh, with 70 million, over 70 million content items and 5,000 publishers participating. You know, we're connecting and, and linking it at scale. And um, DOIs are, are now connecting uh, funding information. Uh, ORCID IDs uh, tie, in the, uh, tie in the researchers. Uh, we're still hoping for something on the institutional front. Uh, and so we see then moving into the um, uh, DET space in collecting this uh, data. It's about making it's about making connections and creating a map uh, for the whole uh, scholarly research uh, research enterprise. And uh, so we have these uh, layers that have started to build up. Uh, we have contributors uh, via Orchid. Uh, Crossref is collecting uh, funding information. Uh, we're now starting to get uh, publication history, uh, retraction information, corrections via Crossmark. Uh, access indicators, licensing information, uh, and of course we have many different types of uh, uh, research objects, not just journal articles, but many, many other things. And via Crossref and uh, DataSight now dealing with uh, data, this is really expanding. And this morning we heard a little bit about uh, clinical trials. There's work going on there as well. And then the piece that we've been talking a lot about today is uh, social activity uh, about uh, after publication. So traditionally, um, uh, it was seen as uh, there would be the version of record is published, and that was that was the end. That that was the the final product. Uh, but of course, whatever happens uh, after, as we've been hearing, is 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 very uh, very important. And so uh, that's where DET will come in. Uh, it's designed to be a central point for uh, collecting and disseminating data uh, for the whole community. Uh, and uh, just like Crossref was set up so that publishers didn't have to have bilateral linking agreements for reference linking. Uh, this will also take away the need for individual bilateral agreements between uh, publishers and sources uh, and uh, all the uh, different stakeholder groups who are involved uh, in this uh, information. And anything that has a DOI uh, will get tracked. So from the very smallest uh, publishers and journals uh, to, the, to the very largest will be tracked in the same, same way. Uh, we're also concerned about having uh, transparency and trust in this infrastructure. So uh, we want it to be comprehensive, uh, open, uh, comparable, so that it's, things are collected in a standard way across different aggregators, uh, to have it be auditable and, and portable, and also to deal with issues of long-term uh, data preservation as, as well. So this, this is going to wind up being a lot uh, of data you know, as, it, uh, as it goes forward. So, so I think that's going to be a, a challenge, but just def definitely something we're going to be uh, going to be addressing as part of the service. So I do want to just highlight that it's all about uh, data and not metrics. Uh, this service is not going to be producing any kind of uh, metric at all. Uh, it's going to be providing an API uh, that will be available for uh, tool development and reuse. It'll be available for uh, <clears throat> anyone in the community, but also uh, commercial organizations who are uh, building uh, services on top of this as well. And as I said, we are um, uh, 
in the middle of uh, working on this right now. Oh, set myself a timer. Uh, and uh, there are many different use cases. We've heard a lot about them today, so I won't touch on those. And just to say that um, uh, if you're interested, get in touch uh, with me or anyone at, uh, anyone at Crossref. And uh, you should be seeing more about this uh, in 2016. Thank you very much. Thank you.